Hello everyone. Today in this video, I'll show you how to best way to enable guest user access in Microsoft 365 Tenant. In many of the scenarios, you may need to collaborate with external users like contractors, vendors, partners, and customers. So, before adding them to your tenant, you need to check whether your tenant supports collaboration with external users or whether external collaboration is enabled or not in your tenant. I'll show it here. So, you can create guest users or external users in your tenant. I will show you in this video very quickly step by step. Let's get started. First, we need to log in to Azure Portal using the administration account. In the search box, search with the external identities text. Already I have in this Then I'll just go to this external identities. Now we can see external identities overview page. From here, directly, I will go to the external collaboration settings. Menu or configurations. Yes, this is the screen from where you can enable the guest access in your tenant. So let's go through each section of this screen. First, we'll have guest user access. Guest user access restrictions. There are three options. These are, number one, guest users have the same access as members, most inclusive. I will tell you exactly what the most inclusive access is if you go to SharePoint. Admin Center, then go to External Sharing Settings. We could see Most Permissive and Least Permissive Settings. Here, I'm not getting into that in detail as I have a separate video on this in my channel. I'll continue with my demo. The second option I will have guest users have limited access to properties and memberships of directory objects. This is the default selection. That means this is allowed with limited access. The third one is guest user access is restricted to properties and memberships of their own directory objects, most restrictive as I had shown. What is most permissive and least permissive here? So then we'll have Guest invite settings, guest invite restrictions. There are four options here. Number one, anyone in the organization can invite guest users, including guests and non-admins, most inclusive. Number two, member users and users assigned to specific admin roles can invite guest users, including guests with member permissions. Any user can invite guest user, including the guests and non-admins. So this is the most inclusive guest user setting. The second option says member users and users assigned to specific admin roles can invite guest users, including guests with member permissions. Number three. Only users assigned to specific admin roles can invite guest users. Number four, no one in the organization can invite guest users, including admins, most restrictive. So this is most restrictive configuration. So if your organization does not allow to collaborate with external users, you can go with this. The default selection is anyone can invite. To guest users, then we have enable guest self-service signup, via user flows. It is recommended to keep this as no for guest users. For external user leave settings, allow external users to remove themselves from your organization, which is recommended, so that external users can be removed themselves when they need. From your tenant. So, 
It is recommended to keep this setting as yes. Then we have collaboration restrictions. Cross-tenant access settings are also evaluated when sending an invitation to determine whether the invite should be allowed or blocked. There are three options here. Number one, allow invitations. To be sent to any domain, most inclusive. This is the default selection. Number two, deny invitations to the specified domains. Number three, allow invitations only to the specified domains, most restrictive. So these are the default. Configurations with respect to external. Collaboration settings, and that means by. Default, this allows guest access and collaboration. However, as per your organization's policies, you may change them. You can configure your organization's collaboration policies from this screen. So, once this setup is done, you can easily create external or guest users and share your work and do collaboration with your contractors, vendors, partners, and customers. So this is the main thing you should check before. Creating guest or external users in your tenant. So this part is done. Now let's go through the other options we have here. Cross tenant access settings. There are three main sections. Default settings, organizational settings, and Microsoft Cloud settings. Under default settings, we have inbound access settings, outbound access settings, and tenant restrictions. You can see the various types of inbound and outbound access settings, like B2B collaboration, B2B direct connect, etc. Then, you'll have organizational settings. Use cross-tenant access settings to manage collaboration with external Microsoft intratenants. For non-Microsoft intratenants, use collaboration settings. We can collaborate with other tenants from this configuration. So you can add organization here. We already saw the default settings. Then we have Microsoft Cloud Settings. What is that Microsoft Cloud Settings? Microsoft Cloud Settings allow you to collaborate with organizations from different Microsoft Clouds. After you enable Microsoft Cloud Settings, you can start adding organizations from that cloud to begin collaborating via Microsoft Intra B2B collaboration. Here we have two options. Number one, Microsoft Azure government. Number two, Microsoft Azure China. We can select even both. I've explained these in very detail in my article. You may read that for more understanding. I'll mention the article URL in the comments section of this video. This is my article, I'm not getting into that. I will continue with my guest access demo. Let's go to other settings from here. All identity providers. Configure any of predefined built-in identity providers below for your users to authenticate and access your resources using their external identities. Here, already we have providers in a configured state like Microsoft Intra ID, email one-time passcode, Microsoft, and we can configure Google and Facebook. Using the custom menu, we can create custom providers as well. Configure your OpenID Connect, SAML, WSF external identity providers for your users to use their external identities to authenticate and access your resources. We already discussed the main part of this demo. Then we have here diagnose and solve problems. 
Using this diagnose and solve problems feature, we can diagnose problems and create support tickets as well. Let us see what is there in self-service signup. We have custom user attributes. We have all API connectors. Then we have custom custom authentication extensions. Custom extensions can be used by applications to customize authentication experiences and integrate external systems using web APIs. Then we have user flows. Then we have subscriptions, link subscriptions. You can see your all link subscriptions from here. This is my tenant and this is the directory type and I can see the status here. Then we have lifecycle management. Let's see what is there in terms of use and what we can see from here. Then we will have access reviews. Here we can create new terms. Then using the troubleshooting and support feature, we can create a new support request. If you need any support from the Microsoft ticketing system, you can create a support ticket here. We can create a support ticket and we can submit here. This is all about external identities and external collaboration management in Azure Portal. That's all for today. I hope you liked and enjoyed this demo and learned something new today. If this helped you, please consider subscribing to my channel. In the upcoming days, I'll come up with many trending videos on Microsoft's latest technologies like Microsoft Copilot, Gen AI, Power Platform, Power Apps, Power Automate, Power Pages, SharePoint Online, Artificial Intelligence, and many more. Kindly be with me and help me to grow on this journey. Thank you.